Can you believe it? Come on, keep clapping right there in your house. I'm telling you, it's better to give than it is to receive. And what a thrilling video. What an exciting testimony. That's your generosity at work. That's your faithfulness. That's what you've sown into and built and been a part of. And I just got to say, I think we're just getting started. Then we're going to look back on years and then we're going to say, remember when Heart for the House Sunday were giving away 200000 and then it was like this much and this much. And we just believe that we're called to live a lifestyle of generosity. So we want to thank every person for giving. Clap one more time. Put an emoji in the chat for how you feel. And we're going to keep on giving. I'm telling you, we're just getting started. If you're new to Zoe, you're like, does Zoe always roll like this? Well, we've always rolled like this. It's just never been this much. And we're just going to keep on being the same, showing up, smiling, worshiping God, loving each other, and giving to people in need. Who are we giving to people? Who are we giving to? People that need it. And organizations, partners that will take these resources and take it beyond what we could do in our own strength. So I'm thankful that we have partners literally around the country and around the world that are helping people. We have a heart to help people in need. Somebody give me a Pentecostal amen in the church. I'm wearing a little black jacket today. It's hard for the house Sunday. Go with me to Exodus chapter 36. I want to conclude. We have been in a series called Do You Know why? Do you know why? Do you know why? Do you know why? We've been answering. You can catch up. All seven messages are on our YouTube or podcasts. But I want to I want to preach the last installment. And I want to answer the question, because a lot of you are already this way. I want to answer this why. Do you know why God made you generous? Because some of you are like, I don't know where I got this. Uh, I was having a meal with someone recently the other day, and, and this person's extravagant. This person's crazy generous. And I asked him, I said, have you always been a generous person? Because I, I want to know, like, did that switch on, or like, did, were you just born this way? And he looked at me, and he was like, no, my whole life, I've been taking care of people. My whole life, I've just been picking up the bill. This is just how God wired me. And I thought to myself, there are some people that were born generous, and there are some people that are born again generous. So I think you got to understand, you might have been born selfish, but you are born again generous. And I want to explain to you why. Why did God make you generous? Because you've been made by a father who's generous. So when you say yes to the father, watch, everything he is, you become. So he's compassionate, you become compassionate. He's kind, so you become kind. Unless you're on the 405 at 3 p.m., we're just going to give a little excuse right there, a little pass. But everything God is, you become. So the reason why you are generous is because it's been hardwired into you. It's in the DNA. It's in your new blood. When you were born again by the grace of Jesus, you were born to give. You stop being a taker and a monetizer and a leverager and a user. You stop pointing arrows in and you started pointing arrows out. You started being concerned about others. You started caring about widows and orphans and those in prison and those without water and those without clothes. And all of a sudden, their problems became your problems. And their need became your opportunity. And I just love this about God. And I want to talk to you today because I need you to understand this about Zoe Church. We have today more vision than resource. We're not, we're not sitting around going like, what are we going to do with all this resource? Quite the opposite. We're sitting around looking, what are we going to do with all this vision? Yeah. And I want to show you a story in the Bible where this became the opposite. They stopped having vision because they had so much resource. Then they said I had so much resource because people literally stepped up and were like, God's been so good, we've got to give back to God. Now, I'm going to just explain to you before we read. This is in the book of Exodus, which is the second book of the Bible. 
These people, the audience, the Israelites, they have been taken out of Egypt, out of slavery. They have been taken out of Pharaoh's regime. They crossed the Red Sea on dry ground. They experienced all kinds of miracles, manna from heaven. This is like Denny's just falling down. Just boom, just eggs, ham, bacon, bam. They got fresh Nikes on their feet. There's a pillar of cloud. There's a fire at night. God's taking care. God shows up in Exodus 19, 20 and gives them the Ten Commandments. So they've seen God forgive them for their waywardness. They've seen miracles. They've seen signs. They've seen wonders. They've seen God pardon their sin. They have experienced so much. I wonder if you can just look back on your life and recall the faithfulness of God. Come on, has God been good to anybody today? Anybody sitting at your house, sitting in your kitchen going, man, I just look back on this last year. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you brought me through. I look back on five years ago, 10 years ago, all I can look back on my life, I can see the hand of God, the grace of God, the provision of God. So these people, this audience, they have experienced so much just like you. And then God says to them, it's time to build a house. It's time to build a church. It's time for you to throw your heart, not into your own home, but into my home. Watch here in Exodus and watch the response of God's people. Ex Exodus 36. The Lord gifted Bazah and Ohaliah and the other skilled craftsmen with wisdom and ability to perform any task involved in building the sanctuary. Let them construct and furnish the tabernacle. I'm going to restoration hardware. Just as the Lord has commanded. So Moses summoned. Bezalali and Ohelahib and all the others who were specially gifted by the Lord and were eager to work. And Moses gave them the materials donated by the people of Israel. Moses gave them the materials that had been donated by the people of Israel as sacred offerings for the completion of of the sanctuary translation, God's people brought sacred offerings that were donated to God's house. But the people continued to bring additional gifts each morning. Every morning, they would show up with coffee and donuts and they would bring continually more additional gifts. Finally, the craftsmen who were working on the sanctuary left their work. And they went to Moses and reported, um, Sir, the people have given more than enough materials to complete the job the Lord has commanded us to do. So Moses sent out an email and gave a command to the whole church. And they posted it on the Israelites' Instagram, at Israelites Real. <laughs> and the message was sent through the camp. Men and women, don't prepare any more gifts for the sanctuary. We have enough. So the people stopped bringing their sacred offerings. Their contributions were more than enough to complete the whole project. Can you imagine God's people stepped up in such a way where they had to send out a signal, tell the church, Zoe, stop giving your crypto, stock, and credit cards. We have more than enough supply to build the vision that's in our heart. Oh, I'm just, I just want to encourage you today because the Israelites are responding like we're responding. They're saying, God's been so good. I want to every day come and bring my donation. I want to every day come and bring my talent. I want to every day come and bring what God's given to me. And I'm going to keep on donating. I'm going to keep on sacrificing until the completion of God's, come on, clap and thank God today. He's speaking to us about being generous. Oh, I just love this because write down number one today. I'm going to give you four things to write down. Number one, personal transformation leads to a lifestyle of generosity. When God touches your life, when you experience personal transformation, I want to encourage you today. God is not in the business of behavior modification. 
He has come today with life transformation. And when you experience personal change, when you, man, I was, I was mean and now I'm kind. I was stingy and now I'm generous. I was, I was a jerk and now I love others. I was unforgiving and now I forgive everybody. When you experience personal transformation, the result is a lifestyle of generosity. These Israelites had been changed. They seen a pillar and they seen a cloud and they got commandments and they, go, they were on the Red Sea and they got out of slavery their life had been changed and the result of personal transformation is a lifestyle of generosity in other words when you experience grace and you experience God's love and you experience and God throws the kitchen sink at your life what is that all of his mercy all of his faithfulness all of his kindness all of his approval all of his acceptance when he throws it at you the the result is a it's a lifestyle of generosity. I don't know if you've experienced personal transformation, but I think there's a reason why you're here at this service. I think God brought you here to this channel because he wants to change you. He loves you just the way you are. He just loves you way too much to leave you that way. He's obsessed with you. He's in love with you. He's got a plan for you. He's got destiny for you. He's got things for you to discover. He's got something for you to do. Come on, anybody excited today? I'm, I, I serve the God of personal transformation. God's not changing Zoe. He's changing you. He's not changing LA. He's changing you. He's not changing America. He's changing you. And the result of personal transformation is a lifestyle of generosity. I want you to watch this video and I want you to check this out. Someone in our church who has experienced personal transformation. Watch this. So uh, I grew up in a Christian home. My parents were ministers for a while. I like liked church, like me, myself, like that was a funny thing. Sunday morning I would get up and be like, let's go to church. My brothers were like, you need to chill with the, <laughs> with the being happy and loud on Sunday morning. As uh, I grew up, I would say those feelings towards Christianity kind of eroded a little bit. When I was back home, I was going to church, it was kind of like rare, and if anything, I was mostly watching just YouTube videos online of different places and services, just trying to get fed something. Me moving to LA was like a process. It was something I've been planning for like a decade, but never really could like start to really get the wheels turning on moving till about five years ago. And I remember I was staying with one of my friends he was telling me that I needed to find a church, but it just made me start re doing research and trying to find somewhere like, if I'm going to move here, if I'm going to go all out for this dream, I needed that, that base, that community, that home to be around. First time I came to Zoe, I had just gotten off a red-eye flight, just picked up my rental car, and it was Sunday morning, and I was like, I'm not going to be here for another Sunday, so I need to go now. The services switched to online. I saw the connect groups on the website. And I was like, well, I'm, in, I'm going to be stuck in the house. Like, I should probably, like, try to meet people, like, community out in L.A. So I at least, like, know a couple people when I move. The big, like, thing that made me be like, all right, I can, like, I'm down with this church was, like, during uh, everything that was going on during the summer with, like, racial injustice in America and stuff. I saw where there was like a lot of speakers that they were having like the church was actively trying to understand and realize like what it was for like black people in the United States. So I started serving on culture class like back home in Virginia. Fast forward, I get, um, I get here, there's a community already in place. A month and a half after that, I got baptized for the first time. We did baptism at the beach, which was awesome. It was like a cookout too. And so it was like a, a big party and there was like, like actual joy. I basically, in my mind, the idea that I had was that once I went down, like things would become better outwardly, but like that was not the situation. The storm was still like raging going on in my life. Yeah, so like recently uh, my brother passed. It was uh, awesome just to be able to call up friends to come over like they were able to get there like pretty fast. It was one of those moments. It was just nice to have that community around. 
I think one of the biggest things that I get asked from people at work or just people in passing in LA is like, yo, how'd you make friends? And I was like, at church. My hope for the people I meet every day in the city is that they're able to experience a community like Zoe. For anyone trying to figure out what's the next step, how can I get involved? You can join a connect group, show up to service, serve on a team. If God can be the light he's been in my life during these dark times that I've been facing, he can absolutely be that light for you. Man, I just, come on, clap right there. I, did, I love that story. I never tire of hearing stories of life transformation. When you see it in, in the scriptures, but you see it here in our church, you, you never get tired of seeing couples get changed, a single mom get changed, a teenager getting changed, someone in their old age. It's never too late for God to change your life. Oh, I love the story in the Bible about a man named Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a jerk. Zacchaeus was a robber. Zacchaeus was the last person anybody think they'd come to church. You ever try and invite somebody to church and, and your friend's are like, why are you inviting so? They're never going to come to church. You don't invite them. Invite, invite the one we can get. Don't invite the one we can't. Zacchaeus was the guy that nobody could get to come to church, but he was interested in God. By the way, let me encourage you. You never know who in your family is interested in God. You never know at your workplace who's interested in God. You never know. I, I was talking to somebody in our church this last week, and they were saying, you know, four or five years, they've been talking about our church, talking about, you know, Zoe, talking about the messages. And finally, after five years, this coworker said, hey, what's that? place that you go to and you sing those songs and the guy was like you mean my church oh yeah yeah do you think I could come with you this Sunday you never know whose interest is peaked you never know who's going through a hard time you never know what your worship could do in somebody else's life Zacchaeus was injured nobody thought it everybody wrote him off everybody's like you you the dude with the lifted truck you, 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 you do this mean. You do that. All you do is post selfies, selfie, selfie, selfie. Like Zacchaeus ain't coming to church. But Zacchaeus was interested in God. Jesus saw him sitting up in a tree. He said his name. I love this. If you didn't know this, God knows your name. He knows how many hairs are on your head. He knows when you sit down and when you stand up and when you go out and when you come in more than the sands of the seas, so are the thoughts of the Lord towards you today. He loves you. He is for you. He says, Zacchaeus, come down from that tree. He says, Zacchaeus, I must go to your house today. See, God doesn't want to meet you at some coffee shop. He wants to meet you right where you are. He says, I'm going to come to your house today. Jesus himself comes to Zacchaeus. Now, you got to understand, church folk, because when he does this, all church people are like, why is he hanging out with Zacchaeus? How come he spends time with Zacchaeus? How come Zacchaeus got favor? How come, Zac How come he's not hanging out with us at the Connect Group? He should be with us and not Zacchaeus. Listen, don't listen to church haters, okay? They hated on Jesus and who, who Jesus hung out with, they might hate on you because you want to win souls for Jesus. He goes to Zacchaeus' house and Zacchaeus experiences personal transformation. And the first thing he does after experiencing personal transformation is listen to his words here in the book of Luke. Watch, watch Zacchaeus. Luke 19, verse 8. Zacchaeus was amazed over his gracious visit to his home and joyously welcomed Jesus. Zacchaeus stood in front of the Lord and he said, half of all that I own, I will give to the poor. And Lord, if I have cheated anybody, I promise to pay them back four times as much as I stole. How do you go from being a thief to saying half of everything in my account I'm going to give to poor people? That is only by experiencing the transformation that Jesus can do with the power of grace. Clap today if you're thankful. I, basically, Zacchaeus was saying, none of this stuff matters anymore. It all belongs to you. It's not just about giving to the poor or paying back people. I'm making a declaration. I anything I have is yours. My time, my treasure, my talent, my life, my car, my cat. If you got a cat, give it back to God anyways. But it's all yours. You start living the life 
of a generous person. I just, I just got to be honest. Generous people are my favorite people. And stingy people are my least favorite people. Because if you are stingy, you just have never experienced personal transformation. But let me show you a few things about the life of a generous person. Generous people, write down number two. Generous people love to give more than what's required. They just love to give even over and above. Look at Luke 21. Jesus observed all the wealthy coming into the temple courts, wanting to be noticed as they came with their offerings. He noticed a very poor widow who dropped two small copper coins in the offering box. The offering box. Two small copper coins in the offering box. Listen to me, he said. This poor widow has given a larger offering than any of the wealthy. For the rich only gave out of their surplus, but she sacrificed out of her poverty and gave to God all that she had to live on. See, generous people, they don't give what's required. See, if you only give what's required, you're still under the law. But grace giving flows out of a relationship with Jesus. You say, I don't want to give what's required because the, the requirement of the law tells me, give this much and I'm done. But when you live a lifestyle of generosity, you don't just give what's required. You start talking to God about your life. You start talking to God about your money. I wonder what, what, what this lady was thinking when she put these two coins in, in the plate and she was going by and she's like, this is all, this is all I got. This is everything. This is, this is, this is, this is not smart. Dave Ramsey would be so mad. This is not good. I'm giving my, this is all I got. Can I just encourage you today? Jesus sees what you give. In fact, there's a, a story in the Bible. Jesus says, he says, when I was naked, you clothed me. And when I needed a drink, you gave me a drink. And when I was in prison, you visited me. And the people are like, excuse me, Jesus, when did we give you a drink or clothes? Or good? were you in jail? You was in jail. We didn't know that about you, Jesus. And he said, no, no, no. What you did for the least of these, I saw it. You did it under me. God is watching your giving, and he loves that you don't live in minimums. If you only give mediums, you'll only live in minimums. No, you don't give what's required. We go over and above. Why? Because God gave not what was required. God was generous to us. He lavished his grace. Clap today if you're thankful that God doesn't just give you required love and required blessing and required faithfulness and required. Come on, clap if you're thankful today. He showers me with blessing. He gives me unmerited favor. This is the grace of our God. Oh, I love this about generous people. Write down the next one. Generous people give even when it doesn't make sense. In the natural, it doesn't make sense for this lady to give all she has. It doesn't make sense. Some of your giving, in fact, when you experience personal transformation, you stop calculating according to logic and you start calculating according to faith. It's not about what's required, and it's not about what always makes sense. Like, if you look at the story of the feeding of 5,000, which actually is like 50,000, if you look at that story, it didn't make sense for that boy to give up his, his bread and his fish. If you would have asked me, can we get your fish and bread? I'm like, go find your own fish and bread. Ain't my problem y'all didn't plan. Your failure to plan is not my emergency. Y'all get your own bread. Don't make sense for me to give this up. No, but when you walk with Jesus, you stop living by what makes sense and you start living by faith. It doesn't make sense for God to give up his one and his only son. It doesn't make sense for God to give you all the power and the authority to cast out demons, to preach everywhere. It doesn't make sense for God to give you the gifts of the Holy Spirit. No, no, no. But our God, he is radical in his generosity. Our God is extravagant and he causes you to be radical in generosity. Oh, I love this. Look at this next scripture, Proverbs 11. One person gives freely yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will also be refreshed. A generous person prospers. Whoever refreshes others will they themselves be refreshed. 
Listen, when you get stingy, it doesn't work very well in this kingdom. The kingdom of God is all about giving. This whole kingdom works of generosity. The kingdom of God is all about giving. You've been created by a generous God. That's why you become a generous person. And when you start giving, logically, it doesn't always make sense to go over and above. Logically, it doesn't always make sense to put in your last two coins. Logically, it doesn't make sense to offer your bread and your fish. Logically, it doesn't make sense to serve this many hours, to give this much money, to care this much, to show up for Christmas presents with people in need, to help people for Thanksgiving, to help people with back to school supplies, to help mothers that are single. It doesn't make sense in the natural, but we don't serve the God of the natural. Come on, clap if you're thankful today. We serve the God of the supernatural. What the Bible's teaching us today is you can't outgive God. Every time you give, it comes back to you better than you gave it. God gave his son. What did he reap in return? The adoration of his children around the world. He gave one gift. He reaped the reward of relationship with his children. I wonder when you're giving today and you start living a lifestyle of generosity, you say, I'm not just going to give what's required. That's religion. I am in a relationship with Jesus. And so Jesus can talk to me about my car, my house, my money. Whatever I have belongs to God. And I actually start to live in the lifestyle of generosity. Oh, I love this verse. This is one of my favorite verses in all the Bible. 2 Corinthians 9. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly. Anybody say amen to that one. And God is able. He is able. Yes, he is. God is able to bless you beyond what you can imagine so that you, at all, at, in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. In other words, God says, when you start living a lifestyle of generosity, I'll make sure you have something to bless somebody. I'll make sure you have what you need to be a blessing. If you start living this life where you're looking to give, you're looking to help, you're looking to serve, you're looking to add value, you're looking to help somebody out. When you start living this life, I'll always make sure you have something because I know you don't live to get, you live to give. By the way, church, let me say it to you. You ain't living till you start giving. But when you start giving, all of a sudden, that's true living. True living is not gaining. True living is not accumulating. True living is not collecting. True living is being generous. And God says, I, when you sow generously, buckle up, sweetheart. You're going to reap generously. You cannot outgive God. I've seen it happen every single year at Zoe Church. Every year we give away more money than we did the year before. Every year we just give more Christmas presents, more turkeys and Thanksgiving. We give, give, give all year long. And at the end of the year, we look and we go, wow, we gave more this year than we did last year. And God just blesses us. Why? Because he says, if you sow generously, you're going to reap generously. You can't outgive me. I will make sure because I understand you. You're just like me. You live to give. And so if you do that and you enter into the world, the world of the generous gets larger and larger. And the world of the stingy gets smaller. Have you ever seen a hoarder? They just, you see it in their car, you see it in their closet, just hoarding, just keeping, collecting, maintaining, just it's mine. You get smaller and smaller by being stingy, but the world of the generous gets larger. Why does God's world get bigger? More people being saved every year? Why? Because all he does is give. He gives love. He gives help. He gives aid. He get, Come on, somebody thank him today. I've only been a recipient this year of the great love of Jesus Christ. And so I'm telling you, when you experience this, all of a sudden you experience personal transformation. You stop giving what's required. See, that, that was the problem with the rich young ruler. He's like, what do I got to give? What, what, I, what? Oh, yeah, I'm at church, so you know they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna pass the plate. What, what do I got to give? I got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta give 5%, 10%. What do I got to give? Crypto? What do I got to give? 
when you, when you experience personal transformation, you don't say, what do I have to give? You say, look what I get to give. This story in Exodus that we're looking at today, no one in the church was like, yeah, so it's donation season. <laughs> That's the worst. So we got to stop by the church. Kids, we got to stop by the church on the way to school. You guys get in the car early. We got to stop by the church because we got to bring donations. It's just the worst. Just trying to build something. No, they gave so freely and they gave so gladly because they experienced so much faithfulness from heaven. And as they gave and as they were generous, all of a sudden they, they, they threw out the email. Guys, we're more than blessed. I really believe this about your life. You have more than you realize. You have more time, you have more talent, and you have more treasure. God has been, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. And today, if you'll count your blessing, you'll realize I'm blessed. And I'm blessed so I can be a blessing. That's what the Bible's teaching us. Don't give reluctantly. Don't, don't give under compulsion. Don't give because like, oh, it's the giving Sunday day. So I'm like, oh, it's the worst. No, he says God loves a cheerful giver. You know, somebody that gives, like, have you ever given somebody a present and, like, you're that creepy person? It's like, I just want to watch you open it. I feel so much pressure when people watch me open presents. I'm like, it didn't, you could give me a mousetrap. I'd be like, stop it. How did you know I was dealing with this at my house? You could do the best. Wow. No, God loves a cheerful giver. I pray this over your life that you start walking in this generosity. I'm inviting Drew to come up and write down the last point today. Generous people are always thinking of creative ways to give. Generous people, they're doing this all the time. They're always thinking about generous ways to give. How can I give? How can I bless? How can I help? They're always, watch this. This is the scripture in Isaiah, Isaiah 32. It says, but generous people plan to do what is generous and they stand firm in their generosity. Generous people, that's you and I. God's people. You can actually take God's people and, and translate it as generous people. Because maybe you're not one of God's people if you're not a generous person. Because the moment you experience personal transformation, you're, God, you're God's person and God's people are generous people. And it says generous people, God's people, they scheme creative ways of being generous. In other words, you stop thinking about self. How can I get? What can I accumulate? What can I get? How can I get better? How can I get? No, you stop thinking about self and you start thinking about others. And the world of the generous, generous people, they devise, they scheme, they strategize. They're like, you know what? Let's send this person a Venmo. Let's buy this person a gift. Let's send this person flowers. Let's hook this person up with a meal. Oh, they're eating at this restaurant, so let's call the restaurant ahead. Let's pay for their meal tonight because the, the generous are always scheming ways to be generous creative ways. Let's get flowers here. Let's get a card. Let's get a thank you. This is the world of the generous. You stop thinking about self and you start thinking about others. Let's hook people up. Let's bless people. Let's love people. Let's think like God. Let's act like God. Let's be God. Let's be his hands. Let's be his feet. Let's be his mouth. Let's be his heart. Come on, clap today in your house. If you're thankful, I'm a generous person because I'm God's person. When God gets a hold of your life, he changes you from the inside out. He makes you compassionate, kind, excellent, faithful, loving, and generous because that's who he is. You will start to look like your father. The other day I was sitting on the couch, I was watching my son and we were watching basketball. So I was just watching his face as we were watching basketball. And we seen this one guy go up and dunk it. And my guy's face was like, oh! And he looked over at me and he's like, oh! And I looked at him and I was like, oh! And we gave a high five with a little bro hug. And I was like, he's just like me. He loves basketball. He loves the Lakers. He's expressive. You are just like your father. You are just like the Father God. You love to give. You live to give. You live to bless. You live to help. You live to serve because that's all God does. Clap today if you're thankful that God has been good to you. Don't you believe that lie? When I'm wealthy, then I'll be generous. Generous people use what they have today to bless. 
because it's about personal transformation. What do I got? Fish, bread, two coins. What do I got? I got a car. I got an apartment. I've got a little bit of time. I got a little bit of gifting, whatever I have. I'm not going to wait till I have a lot. I'm going to believe I'm already blessed. I'm already changed. I'm already transformed. Come on, Zoe. Are you thankful today? You got something to give. You got something to give your house. You got something to give your family. You got something to give this church. You got something to give the kingdom of God. You got something to bless. You got good things. God has resourced you. God has blessed you. And you're not blessed so you could flex and show everybody I'm blessed. Zacchaeus got it, didn't he? Zacchaeus is standing there in his living room. He didn't even have time to clean his own house. There the Messiah is standing there. And he's like, listen, I don't know how it's crazy, bro. When I got up this morning and I was brushing my teeth, there's no way in heck I ever thought the perfect one would be standing in my living room. But here we are. Grace will hit you. Grace will find you when you least expect it. The goodness of God will show up when you ne- you just thought, I was just watching a service. I was just coming on a Sunday. I was just talking to a coworker. And God will show up and say, I love you. I died for you. I've got a plan for you. I've got destiny for you. And you'll stand there like Zacchaeus. And you're like, listen, everything I got is yours. I'll give half my money to the poor. I'll pay back if I've robbed anybody four times. Because it's not for me anymore about getting. It is now all about giving. Do you know why God made you generous? He made you generous because he's generous. And God is every day making you look more and more like Jesus. Father, I thank you today. I thank you that we will stop giving what's required. I thank you that today, God, even when it doesn't make sense, we give. We pray over our church today that we will live in the world of the generous. Give us a generous spirit today. We want a spirit of generosity in this house to bless LA, to bless America, and the world at large. Use us. Speak to us. Let it be for us about life transformation, not about religious duty. We thank you, God, for who you are. We thank you, Jesus, for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. There's a QR code that's coming on your screen right now. And I just want to, before we give, we're going to have a moment where Drew's going to sing a song and we're going to give together as a church. It's a real holy moment right there in your house. If you're able to just take a moment, kitchen, jog, wherever you are, just stop. We just want to do this together as a church. We're going to take a moment and bring our annual once a year over and above offering. And I love this in the pamphlet. If you look on the QR code, there's a, uh, there's a map on page 12 and 13 of our impact together. It's got a key right there that says, in the red resources given, in the blue where our services are being streamed, and the pink represents where Zoe Music has been streamed. And I love looking at this global map because it's a statement of where our generosity has gone. It's us saying we're gonna sow generously and the reaping of that is people hearing the gospel. Can we clap and thank God for everyone that's given in years past, everyone that gives faithfully every week? you just flip over two pages go to page 16 and 17 it'll show you this year's vision the vision that we have as a community to give together and bless and the four lanes of our church which is the mission of our church if you're new to Zoe the mission of our church is people saved disciples made leaders raised and the church released and so we've penciled out vision for you to look at and say yeah I want to give towards this the people coming to a knowledge of Jesus, to making wholehearted followers of Jesus, to raising up leaders. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. We want to be a church. We don't just do church. We don't just do services. The world does not care if we're doing church. The world only cares if what happens here affects out there. And we want to be releasing and empowering to you in your personal life and in your corporate life. And so... I'm going to ask you to take out your phone right now or your laptop, however you give. And we're going to give together our offering. Drew's going to lead us in a song. And can we just create a holy moment together? 
that we come. And I believe even as Jesus was watching this widow give her two coins, he's making a statement, isn't he? He's saying it's not about the amount. It's always about the heart. It's not about dollars and cents. It's always about sacrifice. We're going to give right now. And as we give, you know, whether you're giving crypto or stock or you're giving on push pay, just right there is a QR code you can give. And let's sacrificially give together. Let's give something that God would say, man, I can work with that. You didn't give what's required today. You gave an offering. So, Father, I pray over every giver today. Bless them as they give. Bless them as they pour out. Bless them as they sow. We thank you right now. Holy Spirit, give people numbers. Just speak to people right now. Give this much. Give this much. Give this much. Thank you that right now, God, you're a God that speaks. You're a God that leads. I pray people that weren't even expecting to give right now, they're going, God's speaking to me about giving. We thank you, Holy Spirit. You're talking to your people right now. We're out of relationship. We just allow you. We say like Zacchaeus, it's all yours. Do, do with all of our resources as you want. In Jesus' name, let's continue to worship together. You're turning over tables calling for return to lives upon the altar the things we did at first you're clearing out the temple you're cleaning out the dirt for we are your territory lord we are your church We are your people, you are our God, and we are your temple, and make us holy like you are, and we are your children, you set us apart, oh God for your glory, make us holy like you are. to consecrate the unchosen generation a people called to pray so help us God to please you where only you can see for every moment matters in eternity oh, we are your people today make us holy a holy church set apart for your work god we thank you that you're holy so we're holy you're generous so we're generous god we thank you that you'd make us just like you lord in this temple in this house at zoe church we pray all of the glory would go to you we don't want any recognition we don't want any of the spotlight we don't want any of the renown we pray all the glory be to you we say not to us oh god not to us but to your name be the glory we thank you that as we give today as we give thank you that it's coming back to home 
homes, pressed down, shaken together, running over. God, I pray that you'll bless every giver. I thank you that you'll show up in unprecedented ways. Thank you that they're giving one way, it's coming back every way. Thank you that your faithfulness will appear. Your faithfulness will show up, God. We thank you, Lord. Bless businesses. Bless children. Bless business endeavors. Bless creative ideas, God. We thank you, Lord, that we live for your glory. And we thank you for more personal transformation. Do a mighty work in us, God. Your kingdom come, your will be done in us on this earth, even as it is in heaven. We thank you today for these holy moments. In Jesus' name, and everybody said together, come on, let's clap and thank God. Come on, in the, in the chat right there, give me an emoji, give me some fire, give me some praying hands, praising hands, give me some, give, give, just shout me back in the comments. And um, we love you so much. Wherever you are streaming in from, we love you. Your church is with you. Your church is for you. And I know we got people joining us uh, in Switzerland. We got people joining us in Stockholm. We got people joining us from all over the world. And we just want to say as your church, thank you for being you. Thank you for leaning in. Zoe is built off a lean-in culture. We just lean into what God's saying. We lean into the moment. We lean into the things of God. We lean into his word. We lean into his presence because we know when we lean into Jesus, he leans into us. That's why Jesus is like, remain, 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 remain. Lean, 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 lean. Because apart from me, you could do nothing. This church is totally and completely dependent upon the leadership of Jesus. And the more we lean into him, the more he's going to lean into us and show us what to do. And I just love that story in Exodus. They got to send out the email. Stop giving. We have more resource than vision. I pray, Zoe, we'll always have more vision than resource. We'll never have to send out the email. Stop, you guys gave too much. No, we got vision to see people saved, disciples made, leaders raised, and the church released. Clap one last time. What an awesome Sunday.